sensors, like temperature sensors, like accelerometers, right? And the LEDs and the seven segment, so many things, right? You are actually simulating some conditions, for example, your car is moving forward. Some detectors should monitoring the condition, like the temperature or the accelerometer is monitoring whether you are hitting something or not. If you are hitting something, your x, y, z value will change, okay? And then if you are backwards, you may have a light sensor, you may have another sensor to sense whether uh, something is behind or not. Something like that, okay? And something behind, maybe you play some noise, use a speaker, okay? So you can imagine that that is a, a little bit complex story, okay? So you better to draw the flow chart out, okay? So you will have something like when you when you program star, okay. I, I hope you all familiar with these symbols, okay? So basically, this shape will be like star. So when your program star, you maybe you are checking some conditions. For example, you are checking some conditions, and if it's yes, you go this way. If it's no, you go this way. You see, then you have a map. You are actually transferring the whole story to a picture. Then this one is easy for you later on to program. You see? So for example, here I do like RGB. For example, red display. Okay? And then what is the next? And this one, I do something else. Okay? So you actually can divide your whole work into different segments. For example, you can't build up the whole story, but you can do this, for example. After this lab, you know how to turn on the red LED, right? So basically, you know this. You see? So it's very clear in your mind <coughs> how much work you have done. You see? So better to draw this thing out. Okay? So if you don't know how to draw the flow chart, go back and uh, Google it. This is, I mean, the uh, ugly picture table I got from uh, Wikipedia. Okay? So this is the start, this is the process, this is the decision, and this is the input, output. Okay? And this thing can be a subsystem. For example, if something happens, I go, for example, I go forward with, I mean, I can do this, you see? So inside this one, have, have so many, like, stop, steps here. So this one represents uh, like a sub uh, block. Okay. And then in your report of uh, assignment two, you will have your flow chart. Okay. And then my third exercise, my plan, is actually to display the seven segment uh, from zero to F for every one second. If you, if you have read the assignment two, basically this is part of the assignment two. Okay, you need to updating your seven segment, you all know what is seven segment, right? So, I need to run this every one second. You see, every one second. So after the briefing two, now you should know how to get one second. Just now you know how to get one millisecond. Right? So you see you are building up. Okay? So to achieve this, I want to draw a Smith chart. For example, this is my mini project. Okay? So this is how the seven segment works. Okay? So if you check your schematic, this is a schematic of seven segment. Okay? And here are some pins to control the seven segment. Okay? So, just as temperature sensor and uh, uh, what else? 
in here. So just as those initialization, these pins will be initialized by the given function. But here is another pin. This pin is to take in the data. For example, I want to display two. Okay, I should let the seven segment know that I want to display two, right? Then the two, this character should be sent to the seven segment. So here is the pop. Here is the pin. You give the particular character or letter you want to display. Okay. So if you check the schematic, this pin will be pop to pin two on your microprocessor. Okay. So this one will take in the the character. So this one is actually working in GPIO mode. Okay, these are not in GPIO mode. They are in SPI mode. Okay, but you don't need to write code by yourself. There are code given for the initialization. Okay, so same thing here. You go into the, let me stop it. Okay, so you go into the seven segment header, this one. Okay, these are the two functions you can use. This one, initialization. Happy, you don't need to pop anything. Okay, so you see that this, it, you are actually citing that pin to pop to as GPIO. Of, uh, GPIO uh, output. Okay, and then this is a function to set character. Okay, so here you can see what values you need to pass to this function. The first one, ch, this must be the character you want to display, right? And this one, raw mode, is some mode. Sounds like the seven segment can work at different mode. What does this mean? Here are some explanations. Okay, so CH is a character interpreted as an ASCII character. And then raw mode, set to true to use raw mode. Okay, so basically, If you look at this file, you scroll up, this is the corresponding value you should put into the seven segment to display certain characters. For example, let's look at this line. And let's look at this. Okay. It tells you this one is from A to J. So basically this one is A, B, C. D, right? Required the seven segment. I'm not sure whether you're familiar with seven segment or not. Seven segment, you have uh, like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven uh, LEDs, right? So to display eight, you should light up everything, right? To display one, you just light up these two. See? So these are the values you should give the seven segment to display A, for example, okay? So this is a table that you can use, okay? And then, so basically you have two modes. One is you can use a, like a universal ASCII code. I mean, there's a table for the the standard ASCII code, right? What hex number is representing a certain character. Or you can use the table that I showed to you just now in the code. Depends on whether you set this one to be true or false. Okay. So these are the these are the flow chart I, I wrote. So basically what I did is I use, I decide to use 
the table that is given in the code. Okay, remember that code, I have A to J, right? The, the values all given. So in this case, because my task is to display 0, 1, 2, da, 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 to 9, and then A, B, da, 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 to F, then I go back. Like every one second, I update. 1, 2, 3, 4, I'm counting the second. And then after F, I come back. So these are the characters. These are the characters I want to display. Okay? So what I did is I create my own array here. Okay, so I just take out the value I want. I want from 0 to 9 and A to F. I don't want that big map. I just want this field good enough for me. Okay? So you see I will have 16 different characters. Okay? Then look at this. So when the program starts, my I is actually representing the, I mean, I define this one as letter array, and then my I will be this value. Okay, I mean, you can implement by your own way. This is the way I did, okay? So at the beginning, because I want to display from zero, so I set my i equal to zero, okay? Then here, now, you are using the timer, okay? So I will have a, a particular uh, uh, parameter that I always tra keep track of the, time, of the timer. So I record down what is the, how many milliseconds at this moment. Okay, and then I calculate, I have another timer. Okay, so basically for each letter, basically for each letter, before I display this, I will record time. I will record time, for example, time one. Okay, and then I will show this letter zero there. Okay. And then I keep check the time, keep check the time. I, I come in and I have another time T2. And then I compare the difference between these two. If the difference become 1000, means I have already been in this loop for one second already. So I move on, my I will plus plus. You see, so this is the flow. Like I, get, I have current time and then I'm current time minus initial time. Is it one thousand or is it one second? If it's no, I still display the number i's letter. Okay, and then keep checking, keep checking. Until it becomes one, I will drop. What I need to do? I need to reset my timer. Now my T1 is no longer the old, my T1 will up, be updated. You see? And then, I will also check whether I'm at the end or not, whether I'm at F or not. If I'm at F, I need to reset my I equal to zero so that I can display zero. Otherwise, I just display the next one. Okay, so very simple. So once I, once I write this, I can get my code. Okay, so the top, will be exactly the same as last exercise because we still need this MF ticks. You see? So I add the header, add these two headers, then I have my MF ticks variable, right? And then I have this interrupt handler to increase this, okay? And then I have a function to return this value, same. Okay, exactly the same. And then in the main function, as I say, you must have this to enable the interrupt. Okay? And then I have a, my own array. I just copy this out from the code here, from this one. You see so many here, they have dot or comma here. I don't need those, I just need A to, I mean zero to F. 
okay? And then I have I. I have two <coughs> parameters to, to record the time. You see, I need to compare these two. Then I should have LED seven segment initialization. Okay, you all okay with this? Every time you do initialize the device. Okay. And before I jump into the while loop, I get what is the current, okay, what is the initial time? Okay, you see actually this one is <coughs> corresponding to This thing. You see, when I when I draw out this, I already know which part should go where. This one should go out of my well one because my well one will be here. This is the loop. You see, this is an infinite loop. Can you see that? There's no end, so I will rotate this way or I go this way. It's an infinite loop. So from this point onwards is my is my well one. So this thing is before well one. Okay. So this is like a tr uh, converting from flowchart to the code. Okay. And in the while well loop, you see this is basically this. You see that in the sequence. And then I just check the difference. If it's less than 1,000, I display that particular character, you see? Else, this line is this. You see, everything is in sequence. Easy, right? Then you don't confuse yourself, okay, where should I put the code? And then I check whether it's or not. If 15, I reset. If not, I increase. Finish. Okay? So you see the importance of the flowchart. I mean, this is a simple question. If you don't draw, if you don't draw flowchart for some good ones, if you don't draw flowchart, you may be able to do this. But when the system, when the program becomes very complicated, you better have your flowchart. Okay? So you, later on, when your assignment two becomes very long and then the, the flow chart becomes very complicated, you can differentiate which part of the code goes wrong by looking at the output. For example, when I move forward, something is wrong. Then I go into the particular area of my flow chart 